The material used will come directly from the fire department website S56 study material. You can print this information out or have a digital PDF copy. The table of contacts are extremely important to know and understand. The role and responsibilities of the construction site fire safety manager, the daily operations, inspections and walkthroughs, plans, forms, required checklists and logs, signage requirement, and all the reference material related to the fire code, local laws, DOB code, and site-specific evacuation plans. Examinations for the S-56 are conducted by appointment only, which means you have to schedule an appointment to take the test at 9 MetroTech. You must bring in a letter of recommendation for your employer, along with the certificate from an approved training school. You must also ensure that you review the special requirements for experience to be eligible to take the exam, which is listed in Section 6, paragraphs A, B, C, and D. Where a site safety manager or site safety coordinator is required by the building code, the owner shall designate a person to be the fire safety manager for the construction site. The fire safety manager may be the site safety manager or the site safety coordinator required by the building code. The fire safety manager shall be responsible for ensuring compliance with the requirements of this code, including this chapter and the rules of the fire department. The fire safety manager shall conduct an inspection of the construction site on a daily basis and maintain record in a bound log book. Construction site fire safety managers shall be responsible for ensuring the supervision of the holders of the following FDNY certificates of fitness. FO1, F60, G60, P54, S92, S93, E21, A49, G40, and G44. The construction site fire safety manager shall develop and maintain an approved pre-fire plan. You must establish and implement the following for your site specifically. Site specific evacuation procedures, site-specific emergency contact procedures. This means you will also have to train individuals on the site. We'll now talk a little bit about training. The fire safety manager shall ensure that all construction site personnel are familiar with the operation of portable fire extinguishers and other fire protection equipment on the construction site. All workers on site must receive orientation. They will be retrained every six months. All workers that are involved in hot work operation will receive hot work orientation. They too will be retrained every six months. The construction site fire safety manager must file copies of all certificates of fitness on site upon FDNY inspection. Some of the other topics for training should include your site specific safety plan, fire protection plans, tenant protection plans, required daily logs and paperwork, required fire department certificates of fitness, OSHA certifications, and scaffolding certifications. 
Also, you may want to discuss the location of the FDNY first responder box in the event of a fire or non-fire emergency. Some additional items to discuss, hot work operations and permits, gas storage, aerosol storage, location of all portable fire extinguishers, the locations of standpipes, and shanty inspection requirements. One of the things that should be stressed during new hire orientation and retraining is the workplace zero tolerance, no smoking policy. All required permanent or temporary standpipes shall be in a state of readiness once they reach a height greater than 75 feet. In regards to demolitions, all existing standpipes shall be maintained in a state of readiness. All standpipes, wet or dry, must be maintained under pressure. They must be painted red. Have an OS and Y valve locked in the open position. The construction site fire safety manager shall conduct a daily inspection of the entire standpipe system. Next, we'll talk about portable fire extinguishers. They should never be on the floor, and in the event of an emergency, and you had to use one, you want to make sure that you understand the different classes of fires. Class A, trash wooden paper, B, flammable liquids, C, electrical, Class D, combustible metals, Class K, kitchen fires. You're going to use the pass method, pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Always make sure you call 911 in the event of a fire emergency. Fire extinguisher locations will be outlined in the site-specific safety plan. All fire extinguishers on the project site must be visually checked on a monthly basis. Records must be kept and available for review. Permanent permits are valid for a period of 12 months, one year. Temporary permits may be valid from one day up to 12 months, depending on the construction site and the operation needs. Hot work permits are to be issued daily. The responsible person issues the hot work authorization form. A pre-check should be done prior to the start of work. One fire guard is required per spark producing tool and may not perform other work except fire guard duties. A fire guard is required at sites when construction, alteration, or demolition exceeds 10,000 square feet when fronting one street or 20,000 square feet when fronting two streets or whenever the building exceeds 75 feet in height when the construction, alteration, or demolition site is completely enclosed by a substantial fence, the area limitations shall be increased by 50% to therefore require one fire guard per 15,000 square feet when fronting one street or one fire guard per 30,000 square feet when fronting two streets. A watch person is required from midnight to 8 a.m. when a building being constructed or demolished occupies an area of 5,000 square feet up to 40,000 square feet. If the area is greater than 40,000 square feet, an additional watch person will be required on the premises. The watch person is not required to hold a certificate of fitness, but is required to have the required OSHA training. When you have an impairment of the fire protection system, you will need to designate an impairment coordinator. This person must hold a valid F01 license with the fire department. There are two types of impairments, planned and unplanned. There are also two types of discs, a white disc 
when the entire system is fully impaired or a partial impairment and you will use a blue disc. The construction site fire safety manager shall place a sign over the out of service fire department connection indicating what portion of the system is affected. A call must also be made to FDNY informing them of the building location, area affected, the type of occupancy, the estimated time until it becomes operational. Combustible material in excess of 15 cubic yards is to be removed on a daily basis before the close of the day's work. Combustible waste, including rubbish, construction materials, should not be allowed to accumulate on the site. Flammable and combustible compressed gases and liquids require an FDNY storage permit. You can contact the district office to obtain one. All flammable and combustible gases and liquids must be clearly identified on the container. MSDS or material safety data sheets are required for all chemicals and gas is brought onto the site. Ventilation is required when storing, handling, and using these types of materials. Maximum storage shall not exceed in regards to powder actuated tools. An individual must grab the E21 FDNY Certificate of Fitness. Subcontractors must obtain a permit to handle or store on site. Proper signage must be displayed at all times. Any misfired shots are not to be submerged in water and they must be reshot. A permit is required to store, handle, use, or sell 200 or more shells of small arms ammunition. The storage area or facility in which the locked metal small arms ammunition box is stored should have the sign bearing the words danger ammunition in two inch white letters on a red background. All job sites should have an FDNY first responders box. This should be on a solid surface with clean surroundings, easily accessible 24 seven. It should have the emergency contact list contact numbers for site supervisors, site safety managers, superintendents, security contractors, fire suppression contractors, elevator contractors, and electrical contractors. This should also have FDNY permit binders with detailed information with floor plans, standpipe diagrams, and the fire protection system. Fill openings shall be equipped with a lock and closure device. Fill openings shall be separate from vent openings. Tanks containing flammable or combustible liquids shall be kept outdoors and at least 50 feet from buildings combustible material and combustible waste. Fuel for equipment at construction sites shall be stored in approved containers. These metal containers cannot exceed 5 gallons in capacity.
a CFF holder is required for supervising aerosols at any site using or storing over 100 pounds of level 2 or level 3 aerosol products. This certificate of fitness is A49. It is important to understand the can net weight to the number of can chart. Examples of level 2 chemical heat or combustion of 8,600 to 13,000 BTUs. Examples of level 3 chemical heat or combustion greater than 13,000 BTUs. Note, level 1 aerosols do not have any restrictions to the amount or place of storage of products. Aerosol storage is not permitted in any amount at a basement or below ground level. Proper storage of aerosol products on a construction site shall abide by New York City Fire Code. A certificate of fitness holder for crane aerial fueling operations must be present at all times at a construction site when the fueling operation is in progress. This certificate of fitness is a P54. The inspection is as follows. Weather condition. Communications between the crane operator and other personnel. Method of discharge, which must be done under gravity discharge. Fire sources, checking for any faulty electrical fixtures or outlets, or any open flames or sparks. Fueling of the crane. All procedures listed for the P-54 shall be followed. You must also have the proper fire extinguishers and proper signage in place during this operation. A certificate of fitness holder is also required for portable field space heaters. This certificate of fitness is S92 and they must be present at all times at a construction site when portable field space heaters are in use. Some examples are listed as follows. Some of the heaters are kerosene, propane, safe LPG cylinders, and natural gas fueled salamander heaters. These are some of the required documents that you will need on a job site. It's very important to be organized, as the fire department will show up for inspections. One of the first items you will need will be the fire safety orientation binder. This should be divided alphabetically by subcontractor. This should also have everyone's certificate of fitness, DOB licenses, hot work orientation, Another binder will be your hot work permit binder. You should also divide this in alphabetical order. You'll also need the FDNY permit binder. This should be divided alphabetically by subcontractor. The newest one should be on top. The next binder should be your daily forms and checklist binder. This should be its own one inch three ring binder with emergency contact list, most recent FDNY, construction site fire safety manager daily logs, and notification guidelines. The next log should be your standpipe inspection log. This should be its own one inch three ring binder, clearly marked standpipe inspection log. 
daily inspections from the top floor to the street level, testing that's occurring, inspections that occur, and any corrective actions that need to be taken. What is the construction, demolition, and abatement unit? This unit within the Bureau of Fire Prevention is responsible for inspecting buildings under construction, demolition, or abatement. Typical items inspected, but not limited to, during construction, demolition, and abatement are building permit and variances, Certificates of fitness, fire guards, torch operators, hot work permits, site safety manager's licenses, daily reports conducted by the construction site fire safety manager, fire guard logs, emergency evacuation procedures, no smoking signage, Site contact information, including general contact and owner information, standpipe system and fire department connection, air pressure alarm systems, clear access, proper signage, and proper lighting. This is the standard CDA checklist for when they arrive on site. There is a lot of information contained in this study material for the S56 Construction Site Fire Safety Manager. It is your responsibility to read through this reference guide and become familiar with the different local laws, fire codes, and Department of Building Codes. The main areas to focus will be the roles and responsibilities, daily operations, inspections and walkthroughs, plans, forms, checklists, and logs, signage requirements, and reference materials. Thank you for taking part in this training review video. Good luck on your exam and feel free to follow me on LinkedIn. Once again this is Charles McNamara your virtual instructor.